Hey guys, Kevin here from thesportsgeek.com, and in this video, I'm gonna go over some advanced NFL DFS strategies to help you win more money at DraftKings or FanDuel. So last year, I did a couple NFL DFS strategy videos, and I'll link to those videos in the YouTube description below this video. If you haven't already seen those, I highly recommend you check them out. They're more beginner videos, but they're definitely helpful, and this video is a continuation on those videos. So check those out if you haven't already and then watch this video with 10 more tips for this NFL season. And if you guys haven't already signed up for an account at Fantasy Labs, I highly recommend you sign up. They are the best DFS tools out there in my opinion. They helped me win a lot of money last year at DraftKings, and I'm looking forward to a big NFL season this year using the Fantasy Labs tool. So I'll leave a link to Fantasy Labs in the YouTube description as well. So let's get on to these NFL DFS tips. All right, so number one is gonna be absorb as much information as possible. So throughout the week for the NFL season, you wanna be reading as many articles as you can, uh, following a bunch of beat writers on Twitter for different NFL teams. You wanna be listening to podcasts, listening to experts, and just try to soak in as much information as you can. You wanna get a grasp of the full slate of games for the NFL uh, week. You wanna know all the injuries, you wanna know all the coaching, uh, moves that they're going to be making if they're going to be uh, going by running back by committee or if they're going to focus on a certain player on defense or whatever it is you just want to absorb as much information from the experts and from the writers and from the media and from the coaches and the teams as you can okay so number two is going to be ignore what you learn sometimes so in strategy number one we talked about learning as much as you can about that NFL week about the NFL slate upcoming for the uh, DFS contest, sometimes you have to learn to ignore some of the stuff you heard. So a lot of times, especially in the DFS community, a lot of people might be talking about the same quarterbacks, the same receivers, the same defenses, whatever it may be, but sometimes you have to ignore that, especially for GPPs when you don't wanna have uh, too many players with really high ownership. You gotta ignore that, go with your own gut feel, uh, go with your own numbers, your stats, your own research, uh, your own player models, whatever it may be, and sometimes you do have to ignore what other people are talking about. All right, so number three is don't get obsessed. And what I mean by that is don't get obsessed with playing certain players or fading certain players or stacking certain offenses and continuing to do so when they're not performing. So I have this problem sometimes, uh, especially at the start of the season where there might be like a rookie or a guy who I think is gonna break out this year and I'll play him in week one. He won't have a good week one, but I still think he's gonna break out. So I'll play him in week two. He won't break out week two, play him in week three, same thing, and keep going, and I'll waste maybe four or five, maybe six weeks playing this player who's not getting anything done uh, fantasy points wise, and who's just is ruining some of my lineups, and I'll continue to play them just because of my personal feeling, and I don't want to miss out on hitting that player when he goes off for a big game. So don't get obsessed with certain players. Um, make sure that each week you're thinking about that in your head. Start thinking, am I playing this player too much? Are the results there? If they're not, move on to another player. If he has a big game, so be it. Uh, you missed out on that, but maybe you can jump on him the next week and maybe he has another big game. So don't get obsessed with certain players or teams or stacks or fading certain players. Okay, so number four is fade projections. Uh, what I mean when I say this is uh, go against what the projections are saying for certain players. If you have research or a gut feel that backs it up, uh, just watching the games maybe or doing research, crunching numbers, you think some projections are off. So a lot of the experts might say a quarterback's uh, projected to score 22 DraftKings points this week, but you feel he might score 18 DraftKings points and you don't think there's value in that price. So you fade that player when a lot of people are on that player and you gain an edge that way if he has a bad game. Or another example would be a lot of experts might have a wide receiver projected to score 10 points, but you like his matchup that week and you project him to score 25 DraftKings points. Then you would uh, put that guy in a lot of lineups and if he has a big game he's probably low owned and you've got a good chance at winning so uh, the projections are often very close the experts do a great job but they're not always right so sometimes you have to fade projections okay so number five is Vegas isn't always right so the Vegas betting lines that they put out uh, they give you a good indication of maybe the amount of points that are going to be scored in the game so for the over under let's say it's set at 51 points a lot of times it will fall right around 51 points but remember that vegas isn't always right sometimes when the over under is set at 51 points there might only be 27 points scored in that game vegas can be completely off and it's 
uh, more often than you would think that Vegas can be completely off. So sometimes they might have a over under set at 37 points and there might be 56 points scored. So Vegas does a pretty good job with their betting lines, but they're not always right and sometimes they are way off. And a lot of times GPP ownership levels for certain players are uh, very correlated to the Vegas betting line. So uh, if there's a total of 52 in a game, a lot of those players in that game will be highly owned. And if you think that game's gonna fall under the total, maybe you think it's gonna be more of a 24-23 uh, game, so 47 points. You, you would bet the under if you were betting on the game. Maybe it's a good idea to fade that because of the high ownership on those players. So remember, remember that Vegas isn't always right and you don't always have to go by the Vegas betting lines. Okay, so number six is gonna be find unique ways to be contrarian. So let's say that in week one, Aaron Rodgers has a dream matchup at home against the worst defense in the league and DraftKings mispriced him. He's really cheap on DraftKings and Jordy Nelson, uh, his wide receiver is very cheap as well. And you think that those two players are gonna be the highest owned players on DraftKings. You think that maybe let's say 35% of people in your GPP are gonna stack those two players, but you also think that the Green Bay Packers are gonna put up a ton of points. So one way to be contrarian might be to get some exposure to those players. Maybe you take Jordy Nelson, but you don't take Aaron Rodgers. Uh, you go with another QB that's maybe cheaper and offers more value. Or maybe you avoid all of the pass catchers on Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers, and you go with someone like Eddie Lacy, who might benefit from all those points being scored. He might have 150 yards on the ground and three touchdowns, let's say. Uh, you can find different ways to be contrarian. You don't have to completely fade a team. If you think a team's going to put up a lot of points, you don't always have to be uh, contrarian and fade that team completely. You can find some unique ways like playing maybe the third wide receiver with Rodgers or maybe playing the tight end and the second wide receiver with Rodgers or maybe using the running back like we talked about. So find some unique ways to be contrarian. You don't always have to completely fade players. All right, so strategy number seven is gonna be keep a DFS diary. What I mean by DFS diary is basically just any notes you can think of that you think are important before an NFL slate and then after a slate. So before, uh, let's say before NFL week one, you wanna take notes on which players you like, why you like those players, uh, which projections you think are off and why, uh, the ownership levels you think of uh, for each player, why you think players are gonna to be too highly owned, why you're fading certain players, uh, the different fantasy labs, um, maybe the fantasy labs ratings for your models for certain players and just basically all the notes you can think of. Take notes, take screenshots of your fantasy labs models, whatever it may be. And then after the week, you want to go back and you want to uh, recap that week. Did you win money? Did you lose money? Why do you think you lost money? Why do you think you won money? Um, where you went right and wrong with your players? How did the players do that were at the top of your model? How did the players do maybe that were at the bottom of the model? Whatever it may be. Take as many notes as you can, take screenshots, and just record everything. This is something I did back in, uh, I think it started in week seven last year. So I didn't do it at the start of the year, although I did uh, do some videos which helped. But I took notes starting week seven, just before and after each slate, and found out where I went uh, right and where I went wrong. And then I feel that really helped me hit it big. I think it was in the uh, one of the playoff slates last year, I hit another big score in the NFL season. So I really feel that taking notes helped me and I highly recommend you have a DFS diary. Okay, so number eight is gonna be network with other DFSers. So you wanna to talk to and hang out with as many daily fantasy sports players as you can, and hopefully people that are smarter than you as well. That will definitely help you uh, improve as a DFS player, and also gives you other perspectives of what other people are talking about. So uh, even by, when I say network, it doesn't mean hanging out with them one-on-one -on -one or talking to them one-on-one. -on -one. You can even just have them on Twitter, follow them on Twitter. Uh, maybe you do talk to them a little bit on Twitter. Whatever it may be, maybe you have a Facebook group or maybe you, have, uh, you add them on Facebook, talk to them weekly, maybe you email with them, maybe you listen to their podcasts. Any way that you can kind of network or just follow and hang out with and listen to other DFSers will definitely help your DFS game. Okay, so number nine is track your results. You wanna figure out where you're winning your money and where you're losing your money in DFS on DraftKings and FanDuel. So you wanna figure out which type of contest you have the best ROI in. So maybe uh, you're not doing well in GPPs, you haven't figured out how to hit it big, you just haven't had the luck to hit it big, but in these heads up games, you are just killing it, you're crushing opponents, you're doing really well in head to head. 
So focus more of your attention, more of your money, uh, more of your research to those head to heads and forget about the GPPs or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe you're doing really well with GPPs. You're just not a good cash game player. These 50 fifties and heads up, you're not doing too well, but you're doing uh, really well in GPPs. Maybe put your money there. So track your results, figure out where you're best at and stick to that. All right, so my final NFL DFS strategy for this video, number 10, follow your own picks. This is gonna help you create some unique lineups that will help you hopefully win a GPP tournament. So what I recommend doing at the start of the week is to go over uh, the numbers, the pricing on DraftKings and FanDuel, uh, the box scores, the matchups, go through all the number stuff, don't look at opinions yet, and write down all of your own personal picks. Instead of following what the experts do, Make sure you're playing some of your own personal picks. Don't just uh, read the expert picks and make lineups based on their picks. Make your own picks and that will help you create unique lineups that will hopefully help you win a GPP. All right guys, so those were my 10 NFL DFS strategies to hopefully help you win some more money at DraftKings or FanDuel this year. If you enjoyed the video, please do me a big favor and hit that like or thumbs up button on YouTube. It will help support my YouTube channel and also let me know that you guys want more of these DFS videos. Good luck this year.